So one of these updates is gonna be about something R-rated. I, I assume. Being like, milked. Should be arrested for public indecency. Put an end to my misery. My good friend Mara over on Books Like Whoa, when she chose Morning Glory Milking Farm for Blades and Bodice Rippers Book Club, she made it known that she had the hope, if not expectation, that I would vlog my experience of reading it. So, Mara, this is for you. Today, I will be endeavoring to read all of Morning Glory Milking Farm. The length part is very doable as far as I can tell. I think it's a pretty short book. I'm not holding it up because I have it on Kindle. I don't have a physical copy of it. And yeah, today is the day. Here we go. I don't really have a plan for how to structure this vlog other than to read the book and to tell you my thoughts as they occur to me. Uh, I may do some footage of me live reacting, you know, my, my face, which has been known to express my feelings as I read on occasion. But yeah, uh, that's the plan today. Me reading Morning Glory Milking Farm because Mars making me. Let's do it. Also, please excuse the lack of aesthetic B-roll. My brother and I went to a rock climbing gym on Friday and then we went to Universal Studios yesterday. So I hurt everywhere. So the less um, moving and getting up and bending over backwards to get interesting camera angles, the better. I am going to be on my couch reading a wild book. The only acrobatics on the agenda today are those that are in Morning Glory Milking Farm. So this is not a very long book, so I shouldn't be surprised that we have barely been introduced to the main character and her situation. We're already at like the instructions for how to milk um, things. <laughs> if you don't know what Morning, Mil Morning Glory Milking Farm is about, I don't really know yet about, the, I mean, all I know about it is what Mars told me, uh, which is that it's about minotaurs being like, milked like industrial scale farming levels of it you know where it's like you know ma mass mass milking of minotaurs and by milking i hope you understand what i mean um but i didn't know like so like the main character the female character is like going to be milking going to be hired or going to be working there that's like that's all i knew is that that's the setup for this this romance novel is that a minotaur who is one of the milked and the woman who is working at the facility that does the milking. Morning Glory Milking Farm. Any whoosies. Yeah, so that being the case, I had assumed that the reason for milking, like the reason that this is being done in this facility, um, would be because they want to breed. Because that's the reason, I mean, if you don't know, um, this something akin to this already takes place for bulls in order to, to milk bulls so that they can artificially inseminate cows so that we can have baby cows um which you know i'm vegan so all of that is ugh, to me anyway but so yeah i just assumed that in this universe where there are minotaurs that the same is true that they want to breed minotaurs or the female equivalents of them or whatever but that's why they are milking them to collect the milk in order to breed more I did not know, I have just learned, uh, on like page three or four or whatever, that the reason is actually because minotaur milk <laughs> is a key ingredient in erectile dysfunction medication in this universe. So they're collecting it not for more minotaurs, they're collecting it for human use, for human erectile dysfunction, which is a very, very different it adds a very different flavor to the to the to the proceedings. What I find wild is that the main character did not know that this is what she was signing up for. Um, that she is like at, at the during the instructional video is like learning this, <laughs> which like uh, for narrative purposes I guess I understand, but like realistically, for like I, mean, I don't know I'm using the word realistically anywhere near this book, but okay. But for a job for you to have reached the instruction video portion, by then you would know what the job is that you've signed up for. Kaz! Hey, that's not toys for kitties. Uh-uh. Stop it. Hey, stop it. Uh-uh. Stop it. No, it's not for you. She's describing the phenotypic variety on offer from the Minotaur's members. 
and so like some of them look like the the coloring of their like hides furness and others are pinkish and reddish but the 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 particular word used to describe this hue is bubblegum pink. Not a thing that I ever would have thought to see associated. So the reason that she's considering this job is because she's a millennial in facing like uh, crippling student debt. So she's like, this job promises to pay really well. Uh, so, um, which like, okay, sure, whatever. Do what you gotta do. But the thing that I find most unbelievable about this is because we've gone through the instruction video or whatever, and, you know, they're like, well, you know, if uh, the hand in glove um, milking is like, it's taken too long um, and you need a little extra help, then use this like mechanical device, um, which is like sucky and whatever, you know, that put that on and it'll do extra moreness and it's, and there's a, I have, wasn't clear if it's the same device or it's, there's two devices. The other one is the collection device. They're like, once we've reached peak milking, situation, the device that will then be the receptacle for the milk. Um, and the thing that I find like unbelievable about this is not that minotaurs exist or that their milk is useful in for a, a pharmaceutical purpose. Fine, fine, fine. What I find unbelievable is that they would have humans, that they would have people that you have to pay a wage to do this. When when nowadays, like like I said, when this is done with bulls, you don't have people milking them. You don't even have people milking cows. And for anyone who's laboring under the illusion that there is a dairy maid with a bucket who is like hand milking a cow and that's the stuff you're drinking, that's not the case. It's a machine that does it. So I just find it unlikely that this company, this pharmaceutical company, would hire people to be doing this instead of using a machine. Because the only reason you would have like concern about, you know, having a person do this or the, the experience of the milked would be if the milked are the customer. They are not, as far as I can tell. So, you know what I'm saying? Why is this like artisanal bespoke milking, you know? It would just, and, and then the fact that like, if you were gonna tell me, well, they can't cause there's no machine that can do it. Like they can tell and they can only do it if it's like flesh to flesh. Well, it's not flesh to flesh cause they wear gloves. And there is a machine that they use if they like, if, if hand in glove is not working, use the machine. And I'm like, I don't understand why you don't just use the machine the entire time as like the first thing. You could have one person and hook up all of them to a machine and then go back and collect everything. You know what I mean? And then to say that this is a high paying job, that's why she's considering doing this instead of being a barista, for example. I'm like, if there's a reason you need a barista, a machine can't do that. Even though there are, okay, there are like coffee machines uh, that like you can select your drink or whatever. But like, because people who go to Starbucks or something are like, I have this specific order with these specific combinations and measurements and requirements. So like at that point, to try to come up with a machine that can handle the minutia of those requests is more trouble than just hiring a person who can do that. So, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think it is, takes more technical skill to be a barista than to be a, a milker. But that's gonna be a more high paying job, a job which I don't really believe would exist, assuming minotaurs did exist and that their milk could be used for these purposes. Like buying all of that as realistic. I don't buy that you would pay at all to have somebody personally do this, let alone a high wage. So the world building on this is falling apart for me. <laughs> for a sec, I thought I got it wrong that like, okay, so the Minotaurs are paying for this service or whatever, and that's why their pleasure is important. Uh, that's why we would do it, you know, in a way that pleases them rather than just in the machine. But that's not the case. It's just the word being used incorrectly because they're talking about it as if they are a customer. And they usually, they literally, they are literally using the word client. They're saying some clients do this, some clients do that, referring to the minotaurs. But in actual fact, they are being paid. Like if you, um, like, like human men who donate their milk to a bank, they get paid for that. Um, and they get to service themselves in so doing. Cause they're like, you know, whatever you gotta do to get it out, then, then give it to us and then we'll give you money. Um, so here, the fact that they offer 
people to do it. Um, like, it's just, it's, it's more than they would need to, you know what I mean? Um, and I guess you could argue, um, well, they, they do it because then these minotaurs will, will enjoy, um, doing this and will come back, but they're not volunteering. That's the thing. If it was like a volunteer thing, they're like, okay, well, you know, we're going to provide the service where you're going to enjoy it. Um, and what we get in exchange is like your milk, but you're like, you're not, you don't have to pay for it, but we're not paying you. What we do instead is pay these gals to service you. But that's not the case. The minotaurs who are coming, they get paid by the ounce of what they donate. And it is really, really irritating me that they refer to them as clients. A client is someone who pays you. They are being paid for, for the naturally occurring resource that they have to give. They are not paying. So the, it, it's trying to draw this parallel. Um, it, it's trying to introduce the topic of is this, is this sex work or is it not? And I'm like, it's not. Like, you're making it that kind of for no reason? Because, like, we literally do this nowadays. Um, there's there's no reason to handle this way. If they are unthinking beasts, you know, like, shouldn't say unthinking, but, you know, like, if they are, like, like bulls nowadays on farms, they get hooked up to a machine and it gets extracted from them because that's what they need from them. Now, the minotaurs are sentient and speaking and they have agency. Okay, so, like, you can't treat them the way you would treat a bull on a farm. Well, I shouldn't, you shouldn't treat a bull on a farm like that either, but point being... They can object to this. Uh, they have, again, agency and independence, etc. Okay, so then this, the comparison is that it's like a bank that human males use nowadays because it's not in order, it's not for pharmaceutical companies, but it is still for other people's use that they're donating it, donating it to. I, and then they get paid for it. And there's literally no reason why this is not functioning the same way. Um, and I get, I mean, the reason is so that we have this setup where, like, she's there and he's there and it's a romance novel. And then you get to ask the questions of, like, is this sex work? But you don't, though, because the way you've set it up. If they'd made it where you volunteer and you don't pay them, maybe. But, but then that, I mean, like, then you're paying these gals to do this job. And I think that's the part that we've cut out in real world banks. You know, they're saying we're not going to pay somebody to do this for you. Um, and have you volunteer to do it? No, we're just going to pay you the money to do it for yourself. We just want what comes out. There's no reason it wouldn't function the same way here. Because they get paid money. So this company is not only paying the, the minotaurs for what they give, they're paying the gals to get it out. It seems extremely unlikely and cost inefficient. And that's why it wouldn't be done that way. And they are not, I cannot stress this enough, clients. They are staffers, contractors, they are, you know, they, they are receiving funds. They are not paying for services. They are not clients. That's not a client. This is really irritating me. I don't even care about the like hanky panky, which there's going to be for sure. But yeah, I, I just like, I feel angry that it's like saying like, oh, we're going to introduce this interesting conversation and debate about is this sex work? And I'm like, no, you can't have that debate, not with how you've set this up, because the way you've set this up is not true. You are calling them clients and they are not clients, and you're only doing it so that you can may have this, like, conversation that you want to have. But you have not, I guess, earned the right to have that conversation, because that's not what this book is about. There isn't an actually, like, interesting, debatable gray area going on here. You've just, you've taken a, something that happens in real life and added an element to it that is unnecessary and unrealistic, and then you've also mischaracterized it by using a word like client inappropriately. So I'm just angry. I don't care. I don't care about the R-rated nature of it. I don't care about the... that. Like, that's not even what I'm thinking about. I'm just like, no! This is wrong! This is incorrect! You're using words wrong! So yeah, I didn't expect that to be my reaction to this book, which I guess is a spicy reaction, but it's not the one that I expected to have. Uh, so maybe y'all have fresh problems with that stuff, like in a different way, but we shall see. I'm really not letting this go. The client thing is really bothering me so much. Like, okay, like I, I think I've met the, the minotaur that's like the minotaur of this like romance story. And, it, and the conversation again is about like how he's a client and how there's other clients and the clients have preferences and the clients can request, you know, a particular 
milker, etc. And they have a comment, he was like, wants to know if she's being treated well or if it's like a good job. And she was like, yeah, yeah, it's good. You know, we got good pay, good benefits, whatever. And he's like, oh, I'm glad. He's like, they're very generous with clients. I'm glad that they're just as generous with employees. And I'm like, they're not generous with clients because you're not a client. You're you're getting paid by them. You're not an employee because like that's, it's not an employment relationship in the same way, but it's like contract work. You are not a client. It bothers me so much. And you could have the same story if the like fee structure was like where these minotaurs are paying for this service, but they get a discount that's proportionate to the amount that they eject and give to the facility. That would make sense. Then they would be a client, they would still be collecting it for science or whatever, um, but then it would make sense why these girls are hired instead of machines because these people are paying for the service, um, but like then they're incentivized to give more, etc. That structure would make sense, uh, like as a as a business owner, as a pharmaceutical company. Why they are paying these guys for their stuff, and also paying girls to make sure that the it's pleasurable for these guys who are getting paid for it. I nope. Just no, and they are not clients. I, it's really, really irritating me. Uh, so anyway, you know, I hope they, uh, hope his largeness is as wonderful as she imagines it's going to be when they inevitably do the nasty. Um, but uh, it's not a client. I'm so mad. I have a new word to be irritated with. She's talking about like not wanting to tell her family um, what she's doing for a living um, because it's embarrassing or she doesn't want any awkward questions or whatever and she does technically work for a pharmaceutical company and she's like well you know she'll just be vague and just say I work for a pharmaceutical company but the sentence that she that did here is a pharmaceutical company had a nice panache to it that's not what panache means panache is like like if she was performing her work with a certain panache you could say that but what she means is that there's like a certain ring to it, you know, that like, that it has a certain cachet to it, a certain class to it, a certain, um, so, you know, a certain je ne sais quoi to it. But you can't say a certain panache to it. Panache is to do with like, um, a movement or a behavior. So you could, again, you can do your work with panache, or if she was to explain something about her pharmaceutical work with panache, but you can't say that saying you work for a pharmaceutical company has a certain panache to it. That's not what that word means. I'm very irritated by this because I was already irritated by the repeated use of the word client. Every time I see the word client, I get angry. I'm very angry right now. They use it a lot. I don't like it. Anyway, <laughs> one of these updates is gonna be about something R-rated, I, I assume. But so far, the R-rated stuff, I'm just like, uh-huh, okay. Whatever. I'm irritated by you calling them a client. <laughs> and another thing about them being clients, yes, I'm still on that. They leave tips for the milkers, uh, or like there were some of them do. Which again is weird because they're getting paid by the facility. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't make any sense. If they were paying for the service, then you leave a tip. But you're getting paid? So why are you tipping? That doesn't make fucking sense. It's only there so we can have this like sex work conversation. You could have made them pay for it in this scenario. I don't, why didn't you if you, that's the conversation you wanted to have? You know? Like do, do egg donors, do sperm donors, do they tip the facility that they donate to and receive money from for donating? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Found something more to be annoyed about. They're talking about interspecies relationships, which, okay. They're also talking about interspecies procreation. And it's, at first it was just her fantasizing about him having his babies. Him being the minotaur. And I was like, I mean, that's purely a fantasy. Because the thing that makes you a different species, like, I mean, it's not one of the main ways that it's defined. Um, as being a different species, is that you cannot procreate. Like, a dog can't make a baby with a cat. It's not possible. 
And you know why? Because they're different species. But so like having different species in a relationship, as long as it's consensual and they're all sentient and they're all fine with it, sure, go off. Do whatever you want. We get into the territory of bestiality, I guess, but whatever. Like, they're humanoid, they're whatever. It's like if, you, if everyone's in for it and everyone's able to consent to it, then great. But that's one of the things that I love about Radiance by Grace Draven, which we all know I love great Radiance. Um, they can't have children together. Like, they're married and they love each other and they ha can have funsies together, but they can't, they can't procreate because they are different species, which, like, yes, thank you. But, I mean, other fantasies and other sci-fi does this as well, and it, it irritates me. I mean, if you are able to procreate together, that means that you are not a different species. And so I was like, well, I haven't used the word species so far. So I was like, I'm still annoyed about this because they typically refer to these as different species. But okay, they haven't said species yet. So as long as they don't use that word, I guess I can just assume that because they're able to procreate together, that this is just an extremely divergent phenotypic variation of Homo sapien that has developed horns and hooves and things like that, which like then we can get into a conversation about how evolutionarily that would be impossible because you have to, like you can't evolve to have wings because it's not a thing that you have. You can like, things that you already have can become more pronounced or more exaggerated or less pronounced and less exaggerated, but you can't develop a thing you don't already have. But okay, I guess they're all Homo sapiens. Just some of them are, uh, have horns. There's also other creatures um, in this universe. So I was like, maybe, okay, okay, they're, they're all just different races of human. But no, but no, she used the word species. And now I can confirm that the idea of her having his babies is not just a fantasy of hers. It's not just her being, you know, just liking to imagine that even if it's not possible. No, because he's confirmed that his grandmother was human, meaning like, a blood relation, biologically, he has, like, human blood in his ancestry. Which is not possible. Unless he's a human. You know what I'm saying? God, I find that irritating. And this is not the only book to do it. There's, you know, other sci-fi will do it where humans and aliens are together. And fantasy will do it where it's, like, human and elf, human and dwarf, dwarf and elf, orc and human or whatever and it's always used as like a an allegory for race and racism but it drives me nuts because it's not the same thing race in humans they are all humans we are all humans there isn't actually a biological difference which is why racism, well, it's not why, I mean, racism would be awful even if there was a biological difference, but like to, to say that's the exact same thing as different species being together, it's not the same thing. You can't procreate, you can't. Just again, Radiance, Radiance got it right. They can be together. They can overcome um, prejudice of like their different species being different species and having different lifestyles, different diets, different cultures, different phenotypic presentations, but they cannot make a baby. It's not possible. So anyway, I hate it. <laughs> and honestly, like when there, there's lots and lots of conversation about the anatomy and its size and, and various fluids being involved in all that wonderful stuff that I'm assuming is why people read this or what they're reading it for. But I'm not even like, I don't even have like space to be either fascinated or grossed out or, or anything about that. Cause my brain is just like, you wouldn't tip because you're not a client. You're not a client cause you get paid and you can't make babies together cause you're different species. And it's just like all of that stuff that my brain is like on a constant, like, my internal monologue being like not possible that's not it that's not how that works that's not what that word means that wouldn't function this way as a business it wouldn't be run this way you can't biologically make babies together i'm just like i don't even care about the like hanky panky stuff because i'm just too busy thinking about everything else the admin if you will so yeah this ain't no radiance but we already knew that i have stopped reading in the middle of them doing um things 
in a restaurant. Oh my God. I just, I just, it's just rude. They're in the middle of a dining room of a restaurant where they're eating, sitting next to each other and she showed up with nothing on underneath her skirt and she had freshly prepared herself um, for him. They haven't done it yet, you know, uh, like not outside of the confines of her doing her job. Uh, Cause I don't know, I, I didn't tell you, they've started dating now, cause of course they have. I mean, that was inevitable. But in the middle of a restaurant, he's like with his hand, um, you know, doing for her what she has done for him this whole time, except she was getting paid to do it. In a restaurant with people around where, they, where they're dining, where there's other people dining. It's fucking rude. It's my understanding that the like prohibitedness of like getting it on in public or in public spaces or whatever, like the fact that like you know you shouldn't and that you could get in trouble is um appealing to some folks. But it's just so fucking rude. Like in this book you're living vicariously through the main female character, the milker. Her name is Violet. I haven't said their names. Her name is Violet, his name's Rourke. Great. But can you imagine if you were a diner at this restaurant? And you looked over and the lovely Minotaur human couple who was having dinner a minute ago um, are now doing that next to you. Can you imagine? That's, that's horrifying. And I, I definitely do not understand the appeal of like that in general, like how that's a turn on to be doing it in public where like you could get caught. Um, but even if I did, like the part of me that doesn't want to be that fucking rude to to the diners in the room right now, to anyone who's going to dine at the table that you're currently at and going to s occupy the seats that you're currently occupying and and filthying, to the wait staff that have to look at you and deal with you, just to to everyone, there's just like uh, no call for this. And he's got money, go get a hotel room. You live nearby, go to your place. I just, it's unacceptable behavior. I already don't like this. <laughs> and this isn't the only, I mean, there's plenty of books that are like, you know, just, you know, a rom-com that is not minotaurs or anything where they do stuff like this, you know, in a library or in a bathroom. But I don't know, in a dining room of a restaurant where other people are dining is, worse than the other two examples I just gave. The other two would also upset me, don't get me wrong, but where there's food involved and these are surfaces from which people will eat and surfaces on which people will sit while eating and they are currently doing that next to you. Like in a library, again, I don't like this and like say, well, someone think of the books, but presumably you've like gone to like a corner of the library where you're hidden from view because of all of the book stacks and bookshelves, like there's no one else there. You're like, someone could come around the corner at any minute, but like, no, there's no one else there. But in a restaurant, in a dining room, everyone can see you. I just don't understand. You should be arrested for public indecency and put an end to my misery. Anyway, I'm at 75% um, through the book, so too much longer to suffer. Again, still the same scene. I just, <clears throat> he's finished um, finished her off with his hand in the restaurant. And um, hey, so he's, she's, you know, yeah, it, it's been achieved. <laughs> and so she watched him through heavy lidded eyes withdraw his hand and suck his fingers clean as calm and collective as he ever was just as the server reappeared to refill the water glasses. Like, if anyone deserves a tip in this book, it's the waiter at this fucking restaurant. Cause, fuck you, fuck you, oh my god, what's wrong with you? Stop it, stop it, get a room. Anyway, back to reading. I really wish they'd stop talking about them being different species. Um, I was just thinking about this, in, in, in Lord of the Rings, um, I mean, it could just be because they didn't really talk about species. We knew what species were before Lord of the Rings. Anyway, he talks about the races of Middle Earth. So you could think maybe they are just 
different races. Like there's the taller immortal people who are, I mean, it, it does seem like they're more like species, but they do say races of Middle Earth. So whatever, anyway, um, and well, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so again, like if, this is not how species work. This is not how evolution works. It's not how this works, but okay, you're saying, okay, it's a fantasy, so it is what it is, and just go with it, because it's a fantasy. But then it's specifically going out of its way. Uh, she's talking to her neighbor, who's an elf, and that elf is dating an orc. And they're talking about, uh, she was complaining about, like, some bigot um, being like, well, um, you better not get pregnant, because you'd never be able to carry an orc, because she's, like, a petite little elf, and he's a big orc, and that his big orc child, you know, would, like, break her or whatever. And I'm like, I mean, that would be legitimately a concern. <laughs> like, it's not her place to say that, this bigoted stranger in the grocery store. But, I mean, well, in the first place, this would not be a concern, because you're different species, so there would be no orc child in the elf's body, period. But let's say that was possible. That would be a concern. And it's not her place to say that. But it says, uh, anyway, oh yeah, so then um, Violet is asking her elf neighbor, okay, but low-key though, like, how does he like fit in you? Because you're like tiny. And then we're treated to this. She listened with an open mouth as the elf explained her species diminishing population and the evolutionary changes that had happened as they mated more and more with other species, which you can't do. They definitely don't teach us that in school though. They want us making elvish babies with other elves, which is the crux of why most of us are on anxiety medication. I just, I, 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 it doesn't work for me when you make species an allegory for races, because it's, they're not the same thing. And if you make it about love and about how they can love each other and about how they can have a sexual relationship with each other and about how they can be romantically involved with each other, sure, for sure. Um, many human relationships it's not possible for that couple to procreate. And there's nothing wrong with that. That does not mean that's an invalid relationship. So again, a human and a minotaur, and I don't personally get the appeal of that fantasy, but sure, a human and a minotaur, an elf and an orc, a human and an orc, an elf and a minotaur, whatever. You, you know, get, get, do the nasty, get married, live your life. But you are different species. You cannot procreate. And that's why this, ugh, this is an allegory for race just does not, that's when it falls apart for me. Like when they talk about stuff, how like, oh, it's just like cultural differences, so it shouldn't matter. And I'm like, but between different species, it it's more than cultural differences. Like biologically, you have different needs. Like if it was even possible for you to procreate together, there would genuinely be concern if like it's a different gestation period for the different species. Like let's say an orc child requires 10 months to gestate, but elf children only usually gestate for six months. So the elf mother who's carrying the orc child, like, I don't know, is it getting, is she gonna be able to handle 10 months or is the baby gonna come out half baked at six? Like things like that, you know, they're like legitimately, a, well, they're not, they're not legitimately concerned, as I said, because that's not possible because you're different species. And that's why it's not possible. Because different species have different biological needs. <laughs> have to eat differently, have different nutrients they need, have different sleep cycles, have different gestation periods, have different, a bunch of stuff. So when they are like, well, it's just, like, there's literally a line that I didn't read where she's like, you know, it's just cultural differences that don't matter. And I'm like if you're all the same species, <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> so again, that's not to say that you can't be in a relationship. If the point is you can love each other, even if you are different species, as different as that, sure, go for it. Love it. Love that for you. Have a great life. But you cannot procreate. Okay, I have like very little of this book left and I need to finish it, so. See you in a minute. Okay, so I finished the book and I hated it <laughs> for all the aforementioned reasons. Like, I basically like if this kink isn't for you, I really don't see how you could possibly get anything else out of this. And there's just so many problems with this setup, which like I get is not the point of this type of book, but they're pretty fixable problems, you know? Like she, she never gets pregnant, you know, she never has a baby or anything like that. So that's not like a necessary point of the world that like it's possible to have a kid you know and i frankly think it would be a much more interesting conversation and debate and you know moral 
situation, question, whatever, to have if the the thing was in this world, you know, there's all these interspecies relationships, and the question of if these couples want to adopt the the tensions that arise with okay, so let's say it's an elf and an orc, since we had a couple like that. Let's say it's an elf and an orc. Do you adopt an elf child, or do you adopt an orc child? Do you adopt one of each? Do you adopt a human child because it's neither of you, and then that's like, you know, fair? Like, if that was the type of thing people were, like, talking about and is an issue that people have to figure out um, in this world where there's all these interspecies relationships, now that would be an interesting conversation. And it would break this whole, they are different species. Uh, and you'd be like, okay, like, you have this relationship, but then, like, because that's, that's a, if we are doing the races allegory thing, which is like what they always do, and there is no exception, it's a races allegory, which is just like, it's wrong, and, um, and not morally wrong, but you know, like, like, that's just not how that works. And it's also a really, a, a really lazy and boring thing to do with it. Versus what I just said, which is just so much more interesting, you know, my ideas are better. Um, but you know what I mean? Like, that, that's a more unique problem to present than just making it the same copy-paste of, like, racist problems, but just, like, cha swap out the names for fantasy species. Like, that's lazy. Instead of thinking, okay, what would be actual problems that might arise? Like, new kinds of bigotry, new kinds of division that would result from the species situation. Because, and then, but then to continue the race allegory in a way that still works is when we're talking about cultural differences, when you have um, interracial marriages or marriages between two strong cultural heritages and traditions, then it's that conversation of like when you're raising your kids, um, that you have, uh, when you have kids, um, which you are able to have because you're both humans, <laughs> um, like are you raising the kid in both traditions? Are you raising the kid in neither tradition? Are you picking a tradition one over the other? You know, what what do you do? And then, like, kids will feel like they are part of, often have, like, part of two worlds, fit in neither camp. Like, those are, like, real things that people talk about and have to deal with. Um, and that would be an interesting thing that would be happening if, again, like, an elf and an orc adopted Let's say they let's say they chose to go with we're gonna adopt one of each. We're gonna adopt an elf kid and an orc kid. Um, and then to have those kids, you know, grow up and be like, well, we're siblings, but we're not the same. And as we're growing up, you know, like in, they have would have different aging, you know, like maybe uh, an or orcs, you know, age faster than elves, so then like that kid grows faster and and progresses faster through school, but they are siblings in the same household. And uh, if there's like um, you know, species identity celebrations in schools, like, well, your family is mixed species, so are you celebrating both? You are an elf, but, like, your brother's an orc, your dad's an orc, so do you celebrate the orc traditions? Do you identify with those, even though you are an elf? Like, you could still have those conversations, and those would be pretty good to have, and they wouldn't mess with the whole, you're a different species, so you can't procreate thing, <laughs> which irritates me so much. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't irritate anyone else because these stories keep doing it. But yeah, anyway, so back to this book. <laughs> yeah, there's just like not, nothing to the story because the only thing other than the kink that's there is this like lazy nod at an attempt to have a conversation about sex work and I covered why this is not the conversation you think you're having because of how you've set it up. And two, like the racial allegory, which also doesn't work because they're different species and the way you've set it up is not how that works and you've done a really lazy copy-paste where you've not actually said anything new or interesting or brought a new tone to that conversation by making it fantasy species or anything. You have, it's, it's very, very lazy. So reading it, I'm like, if I'm not into this kink, which I'm not, there's nothing else for me to be interested in here. There's nothing else. There isn't like they are not themselves, the characters, Rourke and Violet, they are not interesting or deep thinking or amusing or fascinating individuals. Like, they, there's montages of like, and we got to know each other, and we really got to know each other, and we didn't immediately jump into bed with each other, and that's how we know that we work, because like, we like each other as people. And I'm like, okay, but you only showed me the jumping into the bed parts. 
So like, I'm glad, I'm happy for you that you guys love each other as people, but like, I couldn't enjoy that part of the story either, because there wasn't anything about that in the story. It was just about you guys being hot for each other, which again, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you, the Minotaur and the human, and I'm happy for you if that's your kink and you enjoy it. But there are other books that will deliver on multiple levels, so even if the one part of it doesn't work for you, another might. And I would argue that Radiance, even if like the the romance between Brishan and Eldigo, the like the physical romance between them is not something you're there for or interested in. I would argue that Radiance still has a good plot. It still has pretty good world building that doesn't break <laughs> for any reason. And it has, it shows Brishan and Eldigo actually being people with personalities that you could be into divorced from their behavior in the bedroom. Like you, if, uh, that's why I always say I like reading Radiance because it feels like you're hanging out. I like hanging out with Brishan and Eldiko because they're not always talking about, in fact, they don't talk about um, physical stuff until much later because they're not really interested in anything physical at first. Then they genuinely do get to know each other as people. And so you, the reader, get to know them as people. And you get to know the differences of their cultures as well as the differences in their species because they are two different species. And that's an even bigger hurdle because in addition to okay, you know, in your nation, these are the traditions you have, these are the foods you have, this is how you dress, this is what you believe. In addition to that, you physically function differently and like getting used to all those differences and, and negotiating those differences when you're just living together, let alone the bedroom. Like that's all actually done quite well in Radiance. So even if you were not into the bedroom stuff, there is other stuff for you to enjoy. In this book, if you're not into the kink, I don't think there's anything else. Not, there's nothing, no character work for you to latch on to, no interesting conversation, no interesting world building. It's all like paint by number cardboard cutout stuff there to prop up the situation in order to have the kink be possible. Which again, like if that's what you're into and that's your kink, then I'm really happy you have this book and I'm happy you can enjoy it. But it doesn't offer anything to someone that is not into that kink. So yeah, Kel's a breeze. I did not like it. I, I had a smidge of hope because it had been compared to Radiance. And I was like, I mean, I know it's not going to be Radiance, but to be clear, I did not go and in, go into this going, well, I expect Radiance. And if it's anything less than Radiance, it'll be, I mean, nothing's ever going to be Radiance. Um, but I was like, okay, maybe, maybe if it's like Radiance-esque in some even small way, but it wasn't it wasn't at all because even if it was like exactly the way that it is right now with the same world building the same problems i have with the species thing the same kink but we actually did get a feel for them as people more where like their personalities they would have interesting conversations outside of the physical um then i, I could have something you know that i'd be like well this is not my kink and I, there's a lot of problems with the world building but you know like I enjoyed like them as characters and I enjoyed watching the development of their relationship even if like, I'm not into the you know the hanky panky part of it but there wasn't anything outside of the hanky panky part I'm told that there is and again I'm very happy for the couple that that off screen they had um, things to talk about and they got along I'm very happy for them I did not get to see it I did not get to be a part of that or know anything about it but I'm really happy for them that that occurred. Wish I could have seen it. <laughs> so yeah, I hated it. <laughs> but um, better luck next time, yeah? Better luck next time. What did you think of it, kids? Did you like Morning Glory Milky Farm? You napped through all of it. Did you have a good nap? I think that'll about do it. I've read it. I have nothing further to say. <laughs> I wish I'd liked it better, but I'm not surprised. No one is surprised that I didn't like it. Oh, yeah. So. That, that's it, I think. Uh, let me know your thoughts if you've read it. Let me know your thoughts if you haven't read it. Let me know what you've heard about it. Let me know if... Whatever you want to let me know. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times will be up on Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.